Hello and welcome to a very important discussion on high blood pressure, also called hypertension. Though it's a very common health issue, yet it's so serious that it has become a common cause of premature deaths across the world. Would you believe that 46% of the people in the world do not even know that they have hypertension? That's the fact shared by the World Health Organization. Hence, it's very important to get tested for hypertension and timely treated. Timely treatment prevents the possibility of heart attack, kidney damage, and several other chronic issues. Hypertension has become a silent killer because without obvious reasons, it can cause serious complications as well. Hence, it's important that we take this issue very seriously. Heart failure often happens when the heart is not able to pump blood effectively. Today, we will discuss how high blood pressure leads to heart failure, the signs you should look out for, and how to manage your blood pressure effectively to protect your heart. Today, I'm privileged to have a super illustrious panel of eminent doctors with me to discuss this very important health issue. I have with me Dr. Bhagirath Raguraman, who's a senior consultant and the director of Heart Transplant Narayana Institute of Cardiac Sciences, Narayana Health City, Bangalore. I also have with me Dr. Jagdish S. Hiremat. He is Director, Cat Lab, Ruby Hall Clinic, Pune, Cardiologist of Heart Transplant Team. And I also have with me Dr. Mrinal Kanti Das, Senior Consultant Cardiologist at the BM Birla Heart Research Center and the Calcutta Medical Research Institute, Kolkata. So I'd like to start with Dr. Raguraman. Uh, sir, what is high blood pressure in simple terms and why is it often referred to as a silent killer? Uh, first of all, you need to understand that high blood pressure is actually the force that pushes the blood against the walls of our arteries. Uh, here, I'd like to introduce what we call as the pipe and the water concept. It's a very simple concept wherein the water is the blood in our system and the pipes are symbolic of the arteries. So you can well imagine that if the force of the water is too much, the pipe bursts. And this is exactly akin to the situation that happens within our body, especially in the smaller blood vessels, wherein if the pressure is too high, they give way and lead to a bleed, which can happen in the brain. Now, it's a silent killer because it is very, very gradually progressive. Oftentimes, we find that the patient has no symptoms at all. They first present to us with the complications of high blood pressure, which may involve heart failure, kidney failure. There can be retinopathy, which involves bleeding into the eyes and also damage to the other organs. Just as Richa had just mentioned, that almost half the population of high blood pressure patients are not even aware. All that it requires is a simple blood pressure recording. But we do find, when we, especially when we go out on camps, we find that half of them are not even aware that they have high blood pressure. And we get them on the rebound when they present to us with the complications like renal failure or heart failure, and then work backwards and find out that they actually had high blood pressure, which went untreated. How does high blood pressure affect our heart health? Yes, as you mentioned, heart failure is the heart is unable to pump whatever is required to pump. For example, in one minute, five liters of blood comes out for the whole body. But suppose the heart is not able to do that, goes to say four or 3.5, then we call it a heart failure. You can imagine a person going to the gym and doing some workouts with resistance that is weights. The biceps and the other muscles get taut and they call what we call as hypertrophy. But if the person doesn't stop at all or doesn't give any break to the system, the muscles will get fatigued over a period of time. Exactly the same thing happens when there is hypertension. The whole body, even the heart, is designed to work for a blood pressure of say 120 by 80 millimeters of mercury. But if this blood pressure remains high beyond 140 and 90 most of the times, the heart is pumping against higher pressure than it is supposed to be. And over a period of time, the muscle will get hypertrophy. We call it left ventricular hypertrophy. The first thing that happens to this left ventricular hypertrophy, it inability to relax. It can pump very well, but cannot go back to its original form. And then the filling of the heart starts getting a problem. 
And then over a period of time, the left ventricle gets tired. It cannot pump out enough blood. And then you get a full-fledged, uh, say, uh, presentation of a heart failure. So high pressure, left ventricular hypertrophy leading to heart failure is the sequence of events. Amongst all the heart failure individuals, more than 25% will have underlying heart, heart hypertension as the main cause. And those who are hypertensive, almost one third of them will end up getting heart failure. Now we'd also like to know that what are those early signs that indicate that uh, hypertension and high BP is affecting our heart health? I would like to pose this question to Dr. Das. Very important question. Uh, the reason is uh, you have already mentioned that uh, uh, hypertension is a silent killer. So it may be totally silent. There may not be any symptoms at all. But to start with, there are certain symptoms which are very, very important. It depends upon the four chambers of the heart, which is being affected more uh, in intensity. Four chambers means on the right side, there are two chambers. On the left side, there are two chambers. Now, if the left-sided chambers are more affected and they are, to start with, actually, they are affected, that results in certain kind of fatigue. So fatigue is a very, very important symptom. As uh, Dr. Hiramath has said, that uh, there is more work of breathing because of the uh, high pressure and uh, the uh, various muscles, they cannot work properly. So work of breathing is more, so there may be shortness of breath. Same way, there can be palpitation because of the high heart rate that is happening because of the uh, involvement of the heart. On the other hand, if the right side of the heart is involved, which is a later consequence after the left heart has been involved, the right side of the heart is involved, then we can get certain kind of features like swelling of the uh, leg, swelling of the body, and uh, we call it edema. So that kind of things can happen. Now, this swelling is due to the accumulation of water. Now, it can happen on the left side in the lungs when the left side of the heart is involved and on the right side in the body when the right side of the heart is involved. So these are certain features uh, which can uh, be uh, the earliest sign. But later on, of course, there can be much more sinister symptoms like loss of consciousness, uh, the, uh, the features of uh, arrhythmia or irregular heartbeat, the features of uh, stroke. So all these kinds of things can happen and not last but not the least is the kidney affection, which can also result in a, a lack of urine information or less urine information, which might again in turn result into swelling of the le legs and body. Right. So why is it important to detect and treat high BP at the right time? Uh, I would like Dr. Raghuraman to share his thoughts on this. So the, this again underlines the importance of periodic uh, medical checkups and periodic uh, follow-ups that are required. This is because the essential concept is to prevent the onset of complications by detecting hypertension early. Now, oftentimes we present to a doctor only when we have symptoms. But as I already told you, that hypertension is a silent problem. It, it rarely presents with a symptom that forces you to go to a doctor. And it, all that it requires is that you just need to get to the nearest uh, clinic or a doctor and just check a blood pressure reading which many of us in our busy schedules often forget. So what I wish to underline here is prevention is better than cure. The faster that you're able to detect that high blood pressure is there and take necessary measures. Now, by necessary measures, most of the patients are petrified that they have to swallow a tablet every day. It's not like that. All that is required is some lifestyle changes, something like reduction of the body weight, regular exercise, cut down the salt intake, particularly in the youngsters of today, the highly processed foods which contain high levels of salt, all of these can lead to high blood pressure. And all of this, whenever the high blood pressure is there, this adds enormous strain on both the heart as well as the blood vessels. And that is the beginning of multiple complications all over the body in all the organs. So as I mentioned already, it can lead to heart failure, it can lead to kidney failure, it can cause bleed in the eye, including retinopathy, and damage to multiple organs, including stroke. I've had very, very young patients who presented to us with a stroke and all that was required is that they had to check the blood pressure early and prevent this from happening. Remember that we can prevent the onset of heart failure by almost 50%
if you are able to just detect high blood pressure and manage it adequately, either by lifestyle modification in the earlier stages or definitely by medications. Another concept that I wish to mention here is that many patients are either averse to taking medications or would prefer to have only one tablet. And the moment the dosage of tablets or the number of tablets escalates, they are very resistant and would, would skip medications. So very important that the target blood pressure should be achieved whatever it takes, including lifestyle and whatever number of tablets is required. Today, we have a lot of lifestyle issues. So how can we alter or manage our lifestyles effectively to mitigate the risk of uh, heart issues related to hypertension? I'd like to pose this to Dr. Hiramat. Dr. Bagirath has made my life a bit easier because lifestyle change actually is an unsung hero. Like it, the treatment or the management or the prevention of heart failure actually starts with lifestyle change. To make it easier for people, I usually give them an acronym of a new alphabet, A, B, C, D. A is anxiety or mind management. B is body management by way of weight and by way of preventing central obesity. That means the weight gain around the waist that needs to be controlled. Then C would be for cigarette, uh, tobacco and other addictions. And D would be for diet. So in weight, it is said that if you are overweight, lose at least 10 kilograms of the original, and then you get all the possible medical benefits, including better control of blood pressure, less number of tablets, and overall smoother control. Uh, you could take obesity consultation if required, if you are very obese for that matter. Diet, a cigarette or tobacco is absolute no. If somebody is a hypertensive and if he smokes, or consumes tobacco in any form, it would exponentially increase the risk of developing a heart attack or a paralysis. So we, it's an absolute no-no for alcohol. Some say it is allowed, but I would strongly say that it is harmful to the body. And less said about it, uh, it is better. Sedentary lifestyle definitely needs to be avoided. Uh, so how to do it in a busy way is to every half an hour one should get up and walk around for 15 to 20 steps. It takes about seven to eight seconds to do that. So if you or you can use a standing workstation, so that way you are using the leg muscles throughout the day. And if you could make about at least 5,000 steps in a day, it is a good kind of a non-sedentary lifestyle. In addition, if you can manage 150 minutes of some kind of ex activity exercise, like walking, cycling, jogging, swimming, dancing, or aerobics in the gym, it is quite good for hypertension management. So we are on the uh, exercise part of the lifestyle management. And then we come to the salt part. The D is the diet. So in the salt, normally we consume about 12 to 13 grams of salt in a day. But a hypertensive individual, the maximum allowed uh, is about 5 grams. So it's a significant reduction. So no added salt, pickles, papas, and chutneys and numkins, all the favorite foodstuffs has to have a control on that. Basically, it amounts to a lot of discipline because it's a long-standing disease. One has to live with these changes for a very long time. So you have to have a routine which is quite pleasurable, easy to follow, it is disciplined and will give you medical benefits. So follow this A, B, C, D with your own ways of adding to it. And then probably you will find that you, you yourself a remarkable benefit by these lifestyle changes. So what is the role of uh, medications in preventing heart failure and uh, uh, ensuring good heart health? Uh, Dr. Das, if you could share your thoughts on this. Very important issue. Before I talk on the medication, uh, Lifestyle is very, very important, you see, and uh, that have been highlighted by uh, Dr. Hiramath and uh, Dr. Raman fantastically. There is no doubt about that. But the thing is that how long you will continue it? So that is a very important question which has to be answered. In fact, it has been answered by the present latest guideline 2024 of ESC in a, in a very, very clear way. Now, as per the ESC 2024, the definition of BP has been changed a little bit. First one is 
not elevated BP. Second was is elevated BP about 120 by 80. And third one is high BP or hypertension that is about 140 by 90. Now, why this definition is important? Because another factor is associated with the kind of BP I have mentioned, three kinds of BP I have mentioned, is that risk factor or risk association that is associated with the elevated BP or high BP. Now, if there are associated risk factors or there is high risk of developing cardiovascular disease, then you will have to add the medication even at the level of 120 by 80 millimeter of mercury. So that there lies the importance of the current definition. Now, so for the medications are concerned, as Dr. Hiramata said about the lifestyle, I would also uh, put the same thing for uh, memory purpose, A, B, C, D, these are the four kinds of drugs. A stands for AC inhibitor or ARB or MRA antagonist. The second is B, B for beta blocker, C for calcium channel blocker, and D for diuretics. Now, these can be given uh, alone or in combination, and this combination of drugs is very, very important nowadays because there is high incidence of lack of uh, adherence to the medication. That is why present concept is to start combination of therapy, either two drugs, either say, for example, uh, a diuretic with the AC inhibitor or ARB or calcium channel blocker with the diuretics. And then you are to up titrate the dose and as well as you are to up titrate the number of medications. That's how in the, in the way of up titration of the medications, uh, you can add the beta blocker, you can add the, uh, uh, what is known as the MR antagonist, and once you build up the doses, naturally the chance of uh, the control of the uh, high pressure as well as the complications of the high pressure and aftermath will be controlled. Again, I would, would like to re-emphasize that combination drug, that is single pin combination or uh, the fixed dose drug combination is very, very useful to in increase the compliance of the uh, patients and reduce the complications of the hypertension related diseases. Now, a very important thing, a lot of people have this conception that they have to monitor multiple times during the day if they have hypertension. So what is the right thing? Dr. Raghuraman, if you could tell us that what is the right quantity in which people need to monitor their uh, hypertension levels in a day? So it's important here that you should have monitor your blood pressure at least about a few times a week, maybe three times, four times as necessary. The other important thing is monitor it at different times of the day. Oftentimes, I find patients who monitor it, particularly at that time, and if it's normal, they think that the rest of the day is also normal and refuse to take tablets. So at different times of the day would be helpful. It is important, at least in the initial stages, when the person has been diagnosed to have high blood pressure, at least monitor it more frequently and keep a log of it and hand it over to your doctor so that the doctor is well aware as to what's happening. Here, I'd like to bring in the concept of white coat hypertension. I have patients who come in to the outpatient department. When we check their blood pressure, it is high. But when they get back into their comfortable environment, it is normal. So in these situations, it is difficult for us to decide whether they need to be on medication or they don't need to be on medication. So here, it's very, very helpful if the patient can keep a log of his or her readings and then submit it to us so that we have a fair idea what happens when they are out of office, that is away from our doctor's office in their own environment at, at their workplace so that it, we get a comfortable idea as to what's happening. Now, the next thing that's important is that the we have now facility to record what we call ambulatory blood pressure recording. At least in the first initial diagnosis phase of high blood pressure, it's important to go through this once. The purpose is that you get a 24-hour reading of this particular patient, which can be programmed at either 15-minute intervals or 30-minute intervals. You don't need to do it every day. If you do it once, you have a fair idea what happens when the person is sleeping, what happens when he's exercising, what happens when he's driving to work, what happens, what is the blood pressure when he's at work in his office? Is it a high stress uh, situation which causes high blood pressure? So these kind of readings help us. Lastly, I must mention that nowadays we have access to a lot of 
uh, uh, gadgets which which are simple like even watches that can give us a fair idea not that everybody should buy it but the purpose or the message that like i'd like to convey here is that if you get readings from these gadgets at least it will alert you that you need to seek medical help and of course following up and it, the laziness or the inertia of recording your own blood pressure is obviated if you have a gadget that can do it for you and then it is so well programmed that by bluetooth i often get readings of my patients as to what is their reading so that we can medicate them on the go they don't need to come to the hospital it can be uh, it can be done with today's technology now we'll talk about stress which plays a very important and crucial role in in into managing the lifestyle issues and also sometimes leading to chronic problems uh, how can uh, you know uh, stress uh, aggravate the problem of high bp and how shall we manage it dr hiramat very significant role uh, as i said in lifestyle management the a b c d is the a is the anxiety management that means the stress management so stress suppose i am preparing for this shoot everything is set and suddenly my internet goes off that will send me in a tizzy there will be acute stress maybe my heart rate will go up my blood pressure will go up temporarily my eyes will become wide i might become jittery these are all signs of acute stress or high surge of adrenaline in the system but every day these things happens to me every day there are stresses in life every day some patient goes he wire or something goes wrong in personal life then my system doesn't get time to come back to normalcy so the high level of adrenaline remains high and then it results into narrow arteries and higher blood pressure so stress is one of the important factors of development of hypertension so we are talking of this chronic stress and that can be managed very well by doing some simple things which we know very well i feel today's world most important is time management prioritization of time and get perfect finding a perfect work life balance so this may be theoretical but somebody can work around it i am personally very well time managed uh, in this situation then comes mindfulness and awareness these are things which are very well known yoga meditation they all help to train your mind to lead a disciplined life apart from being it down your pressure apart from controlling your heart rate they give you a certain spiritual background and spirituality really it doesn't mean religion or god it just being aware or being in that like uh, present moment the moment you train yourself to live in the present moment things fall in place stresses go down and your training exudes lot of confidence on the others around you who like a scientific organization has said that the most important aspect of living well with or without hypertension is good social connect and high emotional core around you so these two things which seemingly unscientific do become important in stress management so i would say in nutshell having time management hobbies emotional core group good social connect and of course yoga meditation to lead us uh, life which is let's say relatively stress free uh, is the way to manage the uh, uh, stress and of course that will help you manage the high blood pressure as well we talked a lot about heart health now i'd like to go to dr das and know from him that what other organs could be affected by hypertension besides the heart important question again because why we do treat the high blood pressure this is to preempt or prevent the target organ damages and that target organs may extend from the head to the toes the head contains the brain so if it affects the brain then there might be stroke there might be cognitive disorder and if it affects a little bit down that is the eyes it can cause a retinopathy then you go a little bit down that is on the chest the heart may be hypertrophic the heart may be dilated the heart may fail there may might be lot of arrhythmias irregular heartbeat problem and same way if there is heart failure it can affect the lungs indirectly so then if you come a little bit more down in the abdomen then you will find the kidneys which are very very important organs 
and these kidneys can be affected and we call them chronic kidney disease and that kidney disease if we Ha uh, happens, then it will perpetuate the hypertension process and there will be vicious cycle. So you must remember that. Now, apart from the heart, there is also another element of the cardiovascular system. We call it vascular system. That is the vessels or the arteries, veins. Now, important are the arteries. These arteries are also affected directly by the, by the hypertension process and they can cause changes in the vessels themselves. And accordingly, there can be diseases in a particular organ. Suppose it affects the abdomen or gastrointestinal arteries. Now it will cause mesenteric ischemia. If it affects the lower limb arteries, it will cause intermittent claudication. It, if it affects the terminal part of the arteries, then it can cause gangrene. So in that way, the target organs also include the vessels apart from the various organs. And apart from these also, any other organ which can be affected by indirectly again by uh, a, a phenomenon known as cardioembolism. That embolism means there will be clot formation in the heart which will travel down at any part or any organ and ultimately that organ will be affected. So in that way, it's a, it's a continuum it's a process which can affect all the all the systems of all for the last question i'd like to go to dr bagirath raghuraman and ask him sir uh, is it possible for younger adults to also face uh, heart failure due to hypertension yes now here i must say that the young youngsters of today believe that hypertension and its complications are actually diseases of the old people and they would not be getting it at all so there is a big resistance in all of them to even come for a medical checkup. They don't want to check their blood pressure. They are in the rat race and they want to climb the success ladder as soon as possible. And they literally burn themselves out by chasing goals without really taking care of their health. Yes, I must say that young individuals can have heart failure due to very high blood pressure. And it's very, very important for them to check their blood pressure regularly. The other problem that I wish to mention is that Gen Z, as they, they call themselves, have this problem of obesity, poor diet habits, eating a lot of junk food, and totally no exercise. They lead a very, very sedentary lifestyle. Because of this, they often present to us either with heart failure or with kidney disease or with eye complications, and this is their first point of contact with their doctor. I wish to underline here that you don't need an expensive gym prescription or you don't need a personal trainer to start your exercise. All that it need and needs is, as Hiramat sir rightly pointed out, 5,000 steps a day. That's more than enough. If you can escalate to 7,000 or 10,000 steps, even better. And you can combine it with, it's not a ritual that you have to do it at some point of the day. You can make sure that you achieve this during your day in between your work if you need to take a break. Just move within your workplace or perform simple exercises and I'm sure that you can achieve that particular target. It's important that the youngsters should be educated on this. We go a long way in uh, performing these campaigns as well as uh, health camps. And lastly, we underline to them the importance of prevention so that they don't end up with complications like heart failure or kidney failure or eye damage. So it's important that the youngsters should wake up to this concept. So as we've seen and understood from the discussion, hypertension is a leading cause of heart failure, but it is also something that can be easily managed and prevented by making healthy lifestyle choices, by regularly monitoring the blood pressure levels, and also taking medications if advised. We can protect our heart and reduce the risk of heart failure. Awareness and early action are crucial to keeping the heart healthy and avoiding the serious consequences of uncontrolled hypertension. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to all the three esteemed doctors who have thrown a great deal of light on various aspects of hypertension and also the lifestyle that we have today and how it can uh, uh, enable a, a better situation for our heart, I'm sure. Uh, this is set to raise the awareness levels uh, amongst the audiences, amongst the people who are watching this. Uh, thank you so much, doctors, for being with us uh, and sharing your precious time and knowledge with us.